them come get some Tight faces unraveling, undone From the deepest and darkest I come from No guns, these hands weigh one ton Breaking records, I'm a set it straight It's like work though, hitting like a heavyweight Taking it, never faking it, keeping it 100 Snatching on the champion wings, you better run it I'm gonna win, whatever it takes All cats never hitting the brakes I'm gonna win, gotta sleep with the ace Playoffs? Yes, <laughs> playoffs. They are finally here. Super Wild Card Weekend is upon us, my friends. Six amazing games starting on Saturday. We take you all the way through to Monday night. Welcome into NFL Total Access, everybody. My name is MJ of Costa Ruiz, Adam Rank. Steve Smith Sr. Hello. Dynamic duo here with me. <laughs> Cynthia Freeland will be joining us here shortly as well. Six games, but people are definitely circling their favorite. Tomorrow, though, it all starts with Seahawks and Niners. Brock Purdy making his first ever playoff appearance. And guys, he hasn't even played a full season in Ooh. the league. Just think about that. Trey Lance is hurt. And Garoppolo off on a cart. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Irrelevant making his first ever NFL start. Get a throw for the end zone for McCaffrey. Touchdown! Try to run forward and go to the end zone standing. Down and Purdy, baby. Let's go. Purdy in full command. Going straight. Brock Purdy is the real deal. Who is this guy? Mr. Irrelevant is looking very relevant today. He's the man. San Francisco 49ers, the NFC West champion. Purdy chant. I love it. We say hello to Steve Weish, who is at the 49ers facility. All right. Um, Weish, tomorrow they're calling for 100% chance of rain in Santa Clara. It's been kind of crazy in California as of late. How are the 49ers preparing for the elements as they host this postseason game? Well, you know, you talk about it raining, and that brings the ground game into focus. That is what the Seahawks and the 49ers like to do. But in two games this year, the 49ers have gashed the Seahawks on the ground, and leading that charge has been Christian McCaffrey, the, the 49ers running back. When the Niners clinched a playoff berth in mid-December in beating the Seahawks, he had 32 touches for 138 total scrimmage yards and a touchdown. And McCaffrey likes playing the Seahawks. In three career games, he has averaged 183 scrimmage yards. And while we're speaking of numbers, since being acquired in a midseason trade with the Carolina Panthers, McCaffrey is the only player in the NFL since week eight to have 1,000 scrimmage yards and have 10 touchdowns. And oh, by the way, the Niners are 10 and 0 during that stretch. So yesterday, head coach Kyle Shanahan, he said Christian McCaffrey has gotten better each week. And even though his numbers in the season finale against Arizona weren't his best numbers, it was his best game for what he has done overall for what the Niners like to do. And that's what Shanahan said. McCaffrey is the perfect fit, not just for the numbers, but what he likes to do. And one of those things is to move around from running back to wide receiver where they're finding favorable matchups, which they probably will try to exploit again against the Seahawks. That is a bad man, and by bad, we mean good. All right, Steve Weish, <laughs> thanks for that. Let's get a little three-point stance here about this matchup. Okay, look, just hear me out for one second. Yes. We heard Steve Weish, we know how dominant the 49ers are, but in a parallel universe, there is a scenario where the Seahawks, and in this one too, where they could upset the 49ers. So how would that play out, Steve? Well, we know a clock, a broken clock can be right twice, so let me try to be right, but it's not going to happen. So, <laughs> if you want to if you want to upset the 49ers, think about this. The, the Seahaw Seattle Seahawks, when playing the 49ers, time of possession, 24 minutes. Mm. But in the wins outside of playing the 49ers, 31 minutes oh of God. time of possession, averaging. Mm -hmm. So that means it could be higher or lower. But I got some, I got three points, one. Run the ball well against the 49ers. That's an impossible task. But it's, you're going to have to do it because you want to hold the ball. So bowling over the 49ers, number one run defense. It's going to be tough, but when you got a big bowling pin like Ken, oh, Kenneth gosh. Walker the third, second, unleash or unlock Geno Smith's cannon. He can throw the football. Mm -hmm. Deep passes, 13 Ooh. passes. You see who's dropping that dime to? Lockett. Tully Lockett. 
and let that cannon loose. <laughs> Stop holding him back. Let the third best quarterback uh, percentage get out there with 117. And then finally, we got to just fence in the 49ers running game. Since week seven, big plays is ranked fifth in the NFL, and that's Christian Ooh. McCaffrey. And then Elijah Mitchell is also there, Debo Samuel. Uh, Kyle Shanahan does a great job of making sure that he has a lot of different guys. So you can try, if you can do these three things, it gives you a chance. But if you don't fence in this running game by the Seahawks, which they haven't done all year, it's going to be a tough task. I'm mad they put barbed wire on the fence as well. It was, oh no, nah, barbed wire, that's the, the added touch right there, too. <laughs> but there is a pathway, as you're pointing out right there, running the football, you know, now, like you said, and it opens up that deep passing game. They've got two, two guys that can get down the yeah. field mm -hmm. and really make teams pay. So there is a pathway. It can certainly happen. But will it happen? Oh, absolutely not. No, no, it's not. It's so who are you taking, uh, Rexter? The, 40, the 49ers are going to win this one going away. I have a 28-10 to the 49ers. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be like a 14-10 game at halftime. But eventually, the 49ers, that physical style that they have, just wears teams down. We see it. Every team that plays the 49ers loses the following week. That physicality is going to end up leading. That, that physicality is, is so true. And they, they eventually, they will have play a team in the first, second quarter. But around the third quarter, you start to see the momentum changes. And in the fourth quarter, they start to pull away. So I have the uh, San Francisco 49ers as well, 28-17. You know, these two teams know each other very, very well. But at the end of the day, to both of your points, I think it's going to be too much Niners to take it all the way through. I think it'll be closer than people think. 28-21, mm. but the Niners get the dub. All right, that's the first game of our Super Wild Card Weekend. The last game features the GOAT. Tom Brady once again in the playoffs, and his Bucks are hosting the Dallas Cowboys. I've really not liked the Cowboys since coming out of the womb. I'm undefeated. Ready to go. Left side, long and deep. Another big play. I'm undefeated. Tom Brady's five touchdown passes, no interceptions. Can't get much better than no. that, Duke. I'm undefeated. Tom Brady pulls the fat out of the fire and gets the go-ahead touchdown. That's dominating Dallas to prevail 30-6. Back shoulder fade for Harry in the end zone. Caught it. Touchdown, Patriots. I'm undefeated. That's the ball game. Box win. We beat the Cowboys 31 to 29. What's he on again? Are you sick of the Bucs Cowboys? Close ball in the end zone. Caught ball. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Now, Tom Brady is very good about uh, against the Dallas Cowboys, 7-0 in his career. But it's been an interesting season, despite suffering the first losing season of his career. Brady and the Bucks are division champs and entering the playoffs as the four seed in the NFC. He's an expert at playoffs and Super Bowls. And Brady reminded us that a team with a less than ideal path to the post should not be discounted. It's not the best team that wins. It's a team that plays the best wins. So it doesn't matter, uh, you know. I was a part of a team that won every game until the Super Bowl, and we didn't play the best that day, and we lost. And, you know, you don't end up reaching your goal. So I've been on the other end of it where I was a big underdog my first year starting against the Rams, and we played better than they did that day. Um, but that's all that matters. That's, that's what single elimination is all about. you got to be at your best in that moment. It could come down to a kick, could come back to a Hail Mary, could come down to a situational play at the end, a third and one. So... You know, hopefully all the preparation has got us to this point and we're, you know, prepared for what we're about to face. A very, very tough, hard-nosed team that plays well. It's been good for a long time and we're going to have to go play well. All right, from one pro's pro to another, Sarah Walsh is in Tampa and has more on the Bucks. Tom Brady told us there's a lot of urgency naturally this week. He said there's no more we're close or just two more plays. And when it comes to urgency, how soon could we see his Pro Bowl center Ryan Jensen back in game action? He injured his knee day two of training camp. He hasn't played in a game since last year's divisional round loss to the Rams, but he has been out on the practice field. I watched him lunge on that injured knee, putting weight on it, and Todd Bowles would only say that he's coming along. As for the rest of this Bucks offense, what gives them confidence when they've often at times looked out of sync? Well, if this game is close, late in the game, that's advantage Buccaneers because Tom Brady has engineered four comebacks in the fourth quarter overtime this year. That is half of their wins. His 13 
fourth quarter touchdowns, tied for Kirk Cousins for the most in this league. All of that is out the window because Brady tells us all that matters now is three hours and how they execute on Monday night. Perfect perspective. Important to note here, the Cowboys have not won a playoff game on the road in three decades. So what's the key to breaking that rank? I think it's got to be the defense. You know, everybody, the Dak Prescott always gets all the heat whenever the Cowboys lose. Remember that game against Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago? You know, that wasn't on Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, that Cowboys team, scored over 30 points, and yet everybody just wanted to take shots at him. The defense has to start playing better. And we've seen it, you know, earlier this season when the Cowboys were rolling, they were destroying teams. They were getting to the quarterback. They were applying pressure. They were stopping teams. They looked unbeatable, and that set everything up. And over the last couple of weeks, it has not been that way. Mm -hmm. So if the Cowboys don't come out and play defense, uh, even against a Tampa Bay team that has struggled this season, it is not going to work out for them. I agree with you. You talk about the Tampa Bay defense, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. They have notoriously all year started off slow. Mm. And I like to say they play hang around football. They, they allow you to hang around and do just enough to get you in trouble and then allow you to win. But the Dallas Cowboys also, there's one thing that people keep talking about is Dak Prescott. We've seen this before with a number of offensive coordinators. A lot of these offense coordinators now because of the new rules and, and being still in the playoff hunt, they're zooming, mm -hmm. and they're zooming, and, and I believe sometimes these offensive coordinators who are zooming for new Kellen Moore, they're zooming for potential head coaching spots. They start to allow and call plays in the game, in that playoff game. That starts to say, hey, I, you can't meet me in person, so I'm going to let my body of work show you that I am the right guy. We've seen it with a number of or, uh, offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators where they get too cute, and they start doing things outside of themselves, and all of a sudden they don't get that job, and they screw their team over by doing too much. So I'm looking at this, Kellen Moore and this offense for the Dallas Cowboys, they have to be simple. They got to run the football, not put Dak in a position where he has to carry the workload all the time. Run the ball, take what the defense gives you, easy, confirm what you're going before the snap of the ball, not discovering, and I think they can easily win this game if they do all those things. Yeah, sometimes less is definitely more. All right, time to pick it. Cowboys, Bucks, Steve, what do you got? I got the Cowboys. After all that, you know, the Cowboys? <laughs> just making sure. Come on, shout out to Ooh. my assistant, uh, Arsha. I got 24 23. Love it. I like that pick. But I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm. I got the Buccaneers winning this one. 24. Dog, ah, give me the upset alert. <laughs> Hit me with it. 24 to 20. I, I, you know what? You're absolutely right. The Buccaneers do start slowly. I do believe that they're going to fall behind. It'll be 20 to 10 with five minutes to go. There goes your computer. Here's my thing. Tom Brady will rally them. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, <laughs> all we'll talk about is Dak Prescott let them. But what a, he, it's not his fault. No. I think it's the defense that lets them go. You know, it, I, I struggled picking this game more than I thought I would. I, I really wanted to pick the Bucks, but ooh, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Uh -oh. You just always find a way, don't you? It's really hard to pick against him and his repertoire of, of playoff wins. So I got the Bucks. 21 18. I do still think it will be close. Listen, Brady has made 14 consecutive playoff appearances, ending his own record for the longest such streak in NFL history. It's tough to pick against him. All right, let's get a check on the latest headlines with our NFL insider, Ian Rappaport. Hello to you, Ian. Lots to keep track of this week. Let's start with Sean McVay, who he was taking a few days to contemplate his future, decided that he's coming back. What made him stay, though, Ian? A few days is up. Sean McVay now officially back to the Los Angeles Rams. Maybe not the biggest surprise ever, though I do think from the people I've spoken with that the couple days away was extremely important just to clear his head and give McVay a vision for what he wants for the 2023 season. I would expect some staff changes, potentially significant staff changes. I know certainly this was as frustrating a year as Sean McVay has had. The results were not what he wanted. Uh, I know he went through a lot just personally each and every week getting on the field 
does not want that to be the same in 2023. She took a long, hard look at where he is, the kind of team he has, and where he expects to be next year. Decided to come back to retool. And remember, the core of the Los Angeles Rams, which is, of course, Matthew Stafford, which is Aaron Donald, which is Sean McVay, all now expected to come back. And McVay's news today kind of puts the cap around that. They expect much better things next season. Not too surprising of a move, given how much we know Sean McVay loves and lives and breathes this game. All right, Ian Rappaport, thanks for that update. All right, Justin Jefferson is having himself a year. He's broken one of Randy Moss's records, had everyone doing the gritty, and had the catch of the year. Our agent 89, Steve Smith Sr., he took notice and will explain what makes Jefferson so elite.